Sweet Science Brothers coming to you live from NYC. It's your boy Av, and I'm back with some more boxing for you today. For you guys today, I want to talk about Adrian Broner and the way in which he priced himself out. I want to talk about the implications of this. I want to. I just want to talk to you guys about how I feel about the whole situation. Um, first and foremost, um, if you guys aren't aware of everything that's like led up to this. I'm just going to give you a brief, like, intro to that. So Bob Arum sued Al Heyman, okay? And he sued Al Heyman, and he claimed that Al Heyman had a monopoly over the sport and that Al Heyman was uh, intentionally putting on shows on the same dates as rival promoters, and he was placing holds on a lot of stadiums. And sometimes Al Heyman would have, like... Uh, he would, he would plan one show for the end of March. For an, I'm just going to use an example. And then he would place a hold on four different stadiums without the intention of using any. He, he has the intention of just using one, but he would place a hold on four stadiums to increase the price other promoters would have to pay to get a hold of one of those stadiums. So he was practicing these type of tactics and he was trying to punish these weaker, uh, smaller promoters. And he was doing other types of stuff like this, okay? And uh, it, it's all basic uh, business practices when uh, somebody's trying to start a monopoly. This is basically what you do. You, you try to destroy the competition by making the, making the situation very difficult for anybody to, like, do business or compete against you, okay? So Al Heyman was engaged in these type of practices, okay? Uh, and Bob Arum sued him. And Bob Arum had a big case. Um, the case was so serious that uh, Al Heyman uh, settled with him. Nobody in the boxing world, I've done my research, I've tried to look it up. No one knows what was settled between Al Heyman and Bob Arum. We don't know what the settlement was. All we know is they came to an agreement about putting fights on together. And... Um, I was excited about that news um, because as a, as a boxing fan, that's good news for everybody. And I just, uh, as a Pacquiao fan and as a Timothy Bradley fan, this Cold War, um, it basically prevented us from seeing how good, we know how good Manny Pacquiao is. He's proven. He's, he's the best welterweight in the world. Uh, other than Floyd Mayweather, he's number one um, skill-wise, you know, resume-wise, legacy-wise. These guys are on a different level. But Timothy Bradley also is a top, top guy right underneath Floyd and Pacquiao. And the thing is that Bob Arum has all of the younger up-and-coming welterweights such as Sean Porter, Keith Thurman, Errol Spence, all of these, uh, all of these prospects, right? So... <clears throat> In my opinion, these guys are not proven at all, except recently now we have Keith Thurman finally fought Sean Porter. Excellent fight, amazing fight. But up until then, the only thing Keith Thurman ever did in his career was that he beat Diego Chavez. He did nothing else in his career. Sean Porter, the only thing Sean Porter did, he only did two things, all right? He knocked Pauli Malignaggi out, all right, which wasn't impressive because it's an old Pauli. But he knocked Pauly out, and he got his ass whooped and masterclassed by Kell Brook. Other than that, though, they didn't do anything in the sport, okay? Adrian Broner has done nothing in the sport of boxing other than collect a bunch of vacated titles um, in a few different divisions. But they were vacated titles. He doesn't have any type of signature win, and... Uh, as far as I'm concerned, he is the man who got absolutely obliterated and blasted by Marcos Maidana in one of an, oh, like an all-time classic. That fight's been on my DVR, and any time I'm having a bad day or when I feel depressed, I watch Adrian Broner versus Marcos Maidana. It puts a smile on my face. It makes me feel fantastic. It's one of the greatest beatdowns in the history of boxing. Uh, the, only, the only thing he didn't do is knock the guy out. Fantastic. Anyway, other than that, that's all Adrian Broner's done. He's collected a bunch of uh, vacant titles, uh, fighting unknown guys like Alec Verdiev and other such guys like this who they're okay they're c-level fighters 
And Adrian Broner is a C-level fighter. At 147, he's a C-level fighter. You know, at 140, he's a B-minus guy. Uh, that means that he beats all C-level dudes, but he loses to B-level guys. Like, like my my point is at 140, right? Adrian Broner, like he can't beat Matisse. He can't beat Postal. He can't beat Crawford. You know, I think Jesse Vargas would have beat the shit out of him at 140. And any, you know, there's unnamed. 140 pound prospects that will whoop Adrian Broner's ass too. Okay? Um, so Adrian Broner's a B minus level fighter. He beats C level guys at 140. He kicks their ass, but he goes life or death with any B level guy. Life or death. Um, so it is what it is. Uh, that's how I feel about Adrian Broner. Going back to Al Heyman and, um, Al Heyman and Bob Arum's uh, agreement. That opens the doors for so many potential fights, but Manny Pacquiao and Timothy Bradley are the two guys I was excited about seeing. What would Keith Thurman do against Timothy Bradley or Manny Pacquiao? What would Broner do? What would Porter do? How would they fare well with these guys? Can one of these guys uh, take the torch from these legends, even though... Timothy Bradley and Manny Pacquiao have been in several wars. They're not in their prime. I'd still like to see some of these fights. So we finally got to see, uh, we tried to see the fruit of that with this negotiation between Manny Pacquiao and Adrian Broner. We all know Adrian Broner priced himself out of this fight. And it just goes to show you what a bitch Adrian Broner is. Because I remember before Al Heyman and uh, Bob Arum had this settlement, had this agreement, when the Cold War was at its height, and there was no chance of a fight happening between him and Pacquiao, several times he's called Pacquiao out and said he'd whoop Pacquiao's ass. The opportunity presented itself, and what happened? This guy priced himself out. Priced himself out. And I implore all of you guys... Go ahead and type in Adrian Broner's name and type in Adrian Broner net worth. This guy is a bum. Who he doesn't have money. This he he is going to be one of those classic boxers that's going to end up being broke after his career. How do you price yourself out of a fight? Your first pay per view payday against Manny Pacquiao. Like I can't fathom how a young fighter with any type of talent would price himself out of an opportunity like that. But this is, you know, the new age of boxing where these guys are bitch-made, man. They're not cut from that cloth, man. These guys are not the fighters of old. These guys are softer than, softer than fucking bird shit. These guys are softer than ice cream, man. You know, Adrian Broner, I don't know what they were offering him, but I can guarantee you it was over $5 million. I can guarantee you, he probably they probably offered him like seven million plus a piece of pay, piece of the pay per view. I guarantee you, they offered him big, big money. And this, they, you know, don't get fooled by Adrian Broner's, Broner's rhetoric about how oh he cursed out Bob Arum and said, "Pay me what you're worth." First of all, why would you curse out a man who came to you with a multi million dollar deal to put you on a pay per view? That's crazy to begin with, and it's like ludicrous. It don't make sense. First of all, this guy must be on drugs. That's number one. But number two, he priced himself out of this fight. And it's like, okay, so who are you going to fight now, buddy? Well, how much did you make in your last fight? You know, you're sitting here fighting guys for a million dollars, 1.2 million. And you're going to go and price yourself out of a Pacquiao fight? And you're not fooling me, homie. And you're not fooling anybody with half a brain. You were offered big money. You didn't take this fight because Pacquiao was going to beat the living crap out of Adrian Broner. And Broner would have been damaged goods. Let me tell you something. Pacquiao would have masterclassed this guy and stopped him. He would not go 12 rounds with Pacquiao. He would have been masterclassed. It would have been, people would have been looking at that fight like, oh my God, Pacquiao has never looked this good. And people would think that Pacquiao is back in his prime. And it wouldn't be true because Pacquiao wouldn't be in his prime. What would be true is that Broner is garbage and highly overrated. And you would basically see Pacquiao against a guy with a big name who's C-level. That's all that would have happened. Pacquiao would have beat the crap out of a tomato can. Because essentially, Broner is a tomato can with a big name, as far as I can say. You know what I mean? Even, even Sean Porter, it's like, 
they drained Sean Porter with a catch weight and put a rehydration clause on him. That's the only reason that Sean Porter didn't even bust Adrian Broner up. You know what I'm saying? Sean Porter, with the sturdiest chin in the welterweight division, taking the biggest punches ever against Keith Thurman right on the chin and not getting knocked out. As soft-ass Adrian Broner's going to knock him out? No, buddy. You, you drained the hell out of him. And that's just more proof of what happens to fighters when they get drained with these catch weights. Either way, I just wanted to say, you know, Adrian Broner's a sucker. You know, he priced himself out. And the sad truth is that, you know, a B-level prospect is going to beat the crap out of Adrian Broner at some point. At some point, a B-level prospect is going to just just totally like wash this kid up and just ruin his potential to make any of these big fights and I feel like you know and if you don't believe what I'm saying about Adrian Broner and you think I'm hating you know just take a look at Adrian Broner's mindset it's like you price yourself out of fighting Manny Pacquiao who's not even a welterweight let's be honest Manny Pacquiao is a lightweight uh, you know, 140 pounds is the best like weight for Manny Pacquiao. So Broner would have had a size advantage on Pacquiao. Uh, you price yourself out of fighting Manny Pacquiao, but then you go on Twitter criticizing Kell Brook and telling him that nobody in his team cares about him, and that's why they put him in this fight. Listen, don't open your mouth. Adrian Broner, don't open your mouth about Kell Brook. Kell Brook is a fucking legend. He's a welterweight champion. He's got balls. He's going to be on pay-per-view. Something you have never in your damn career been on. Let me ask you guys another question. You know, how many times has Broner been on HBO and Showtime? It's been like five, six years of heavy, heavy, heavy promotion for this guy. And he still ain't on no pay-per-view all these years? Where my main man, Kell Brook, only came down here one time, you know... Put a beating on Sean Porter, and now he's going to be on pay-per-view. You're going to criticize Kell Brook? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, Broner. And let me tell you, the rest of you haters, something too. Kell Brook is going to walk away with damn near $10 million at the end of this uh, pay-per-view that he's going to have with Triple G. Mark my words, that's going to do 500,000 buys in the UK. That's, that's, that arena is going to be sold out, and he's going to, and he's going to put on a masterful performance against Gennady Golovkin. Triple G is going to ultimately destroy him at the end of the fight, but Kell Brook is going to look fantastic. He's going to win a couple of rounds. He's going to win four rounds, maybe. He's going to look good. His stock is going to rise after that fight. And you, Adrian, you're just, you're just a sucker who is ducking people who don't want to, you don't want to take the big fights and the big fights are going to pass you by and eventually a B-level prospect, a beast that we don't know about, that you don't know about is going to surprise you and beat the crap out of you and embarrass you and you're going to be out of the game entirely. I don't even know where Adrian Broner plans to go with his career because you ain't doing shit at 140 and you ain't going to do shit at 147. Might as well retire. You know what I'm saying? Pacquiao would have gave you a beating, but you would have made the most money out of Pacquiao. Pacquiao was trying to give you a big fight so you could cash out. You know what's going to happen? All the guys Al Heyman has can beat you. Porter already beat you. Garcia will whoop your ass. Thurman will not lay your ass out. Like, what the hell does this kid plan to do? So you can't fight Spence. You can't even make 140. You know what, bro? Consider Adrian Broner a dead man walking. He's basically retired. Ain't shit gonna happen for him in boxing anymore unless Al Heyman sets him up with some other vacant titles. You know what I mean? I, I just... It is what it is. I just wanted to put my opinion out there about Adrian Broner and the Pacquiao debacle. All right. It's your boy Yav, Sweet Science Brothers. Peace.